Sonic Omens is the most joyless experience I've ever had with a Sonic product, official or otherwise. It is the most recent 3D Sonic fan game that has actually completed production. Which is... impressive. The last 3D fan game I could think of that was finished was Sonic GT, which came out two years ago. Really, it came out that long ago? That's actually kind of funny, because that was the same year Sonic Omens got its first demo, back when it was called Sonic 2020. Everyone really loved this game back then. None of the people who loved it played it. They just saw pretty Unreal Engine graphics and lost their minds. But to be fair, I didn't play it either. And why? Because I thought it looked like garbage. Yeah, pretty rare, right? I was one of the few people who saw that demo and said, Oh, it looks like Infinity Engine trash. I'm good. The camera being really close and the tree level weren't really doing it any favors. And I was also hearing that the game had performance issues, so my underpowered laptop definitely couldn't run the game. So I just went back to being excited for Sonic GT. So yes, I didn't find out about the drama and then write off the game. I already didn't like it. That makes me special. But when it came out recently, I decided to give it an honest chance. There are tons of games that don't look fun to play, but feel fun. So I played the whole thing, multiple times, and uh, final verdict, I would rather play Sonic 06. But to be fair, I'm going to talk about the positives no matter how many caveats they have. The music is kind of good for most of the stages. This is definitely the most visually impressive fan game I have ever seen. And the storyboarding for a lot of the cutscenes is really clever and really good. I also re respect the attempt at a real story, but that's where my praises end for this game, and even those are half-hearted. My favorite track in the game is the one that is stolen from Cars 2 DS, Route 99. The visuals are a little too post processy at times, with pop-in that can rival the Frontiers footage we got back in June. And while the storyboards for the cutscenes are cool, a lot of the animation does not live up to it. Some of it does though, specifically the end of the game and this scene right before a boss. But let's hop into the biggest problems with this game. The level design, the story, and the boss fights. The game starts with a Spider-Man PS4S shot of Sonic's room, showing off previous adventures and the like. They tease some Sonic X connections while showing Sonic relaxing. Honestly, this is a pretty good opening. But then... Sonic, have you heard the news? Here, listen to this. They start talking. And this is a criticism that goes across the entire game. The voice acting in this game is laughable at best and ear grating at worst. And look, I know they aren't professionals or anything, but could you have at least gotten someone who had English as their first language? Because this makes it hard to take anything seriously. The voice from the 2020 demo was better though it wasn't really good. I'll just practice by myself, and we'll try and take the emerald before Eggman. Cover me on top, buddy. I'll distract them so we have a shot at taking the emerald before Eggman. Cover me on top, buddy. Good. But it's nothing compared to Shadow's voice, which sounds more Sombra than Shadow. And yes, I know it's a Russian voice, but man, if you told me this was a Mexican, I would believe you. Doctor is well known for this kind of tactics, but this time feels hastily planned. He must be desperate. But why? Rouge, the doctor is leaving the station. I need. I'm listening. Absolute clown behavior. Anyway, Eggman is after the Chaos Emeralds. That's the only setup you need for the story. And we get a chill prologue level, and this level is pretty okay. But it shows off a huge negative in the level design that doesn't really become more noticeable till later. There aren't really multiple pathways in this game like there is in your traditional Sonic game. The path just splits from left to right, and you gotta choose, and it's really lazy. It's not bad now, but it's in almost every level in this game. But let's get off the games back here. This is actually pretty okay. It's a perfectly fine tutorial. The only problems I have with the tutorial is the Infinity Engine, which just has controls I'm not fond of, but that's on me. 
After beating the level, we then transition to- Oh, come on! There's popping in the cutscenes too! This is just embarrassing. The rest of the cutscene is really just to show off the animations, and you know, this is kinda cool. Like, I wish modern Sonic cutscenes tried this hard. Even if it makes no sense for Sonic and Tails to be doing all this in the air, uh, it looks cool, so I'll let it slide. We get an ominous shot of the Master Emerald, which makes you think that this is gonna have something to do with the current narrative. Keyword think. And then a storm comes out of nowhere, then gun robots appear, and are we supposed to be scared of them? Then Sonic falls and Tails barely catches him. Um, okay, I guess the game starts now. That cutscene really is worthless. Sonic and Tails recover from their fall, and the game tries to do the justify the game mechanics and the narrative thing, but it's flimsy at best. They have Chip's bracelet be an inner beam from Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Weird choice. Why not have Tails make an inner beam because there's a gap that Sonic can't get through on his own and Tails isn't there to fly him around? Just anything works better than Chip's wristband being an inner beam randomly. Sonic spots some robots and decides to get rid of them before heading to Eggman's base, while Tails goes to check on the Chow. So we finally get the real first level of the game. Chow Paradise, and... It's fine. Like, wholly inoffensive and very easy. Like, you would have to be a child to struggle with this. And while the level is okay, it introduces some problems that will be a consistent for the rest of the game. Like, how this camera doesn't snap back behind you during cinematic rail grinding. And how sometimes you're just running in a straight line, or how there are only two paths. But besides that, it's nothing special. Let's just move on to the next cutscene. So this cutscene is fine except for the dialogue about how Knuckles is now the guardian of the Master Emerald. It makes it sound like they knew him before he guarded the Master Emerald or something. Which, if they did in this continuity, tell me about it. And if they didn't, why say that? We saw him in the last cutscene. You really don't need to establish where he is or anything. While Tails is unlocking the computer, a robot appears and we have our first boss fight. This boss, like all the bosses in this game, suck. And this is one of my least favorite boss tropes. Dodge attacks and wait for the opening. That's the whole boss! And this boss isn't short either. It's a few minutes and God forbid you die or something. This is just so tedious and lame. Let's just move on. So Sonic and Tails use whatever that is to tr track Eggman to the Grand Canyon. They go back home where we find out that Sonic tried to contact Knuckles but couldn't because of a uh, outburst from the Master Emerald? When the fuck did that happen? No seriously, the game just says this, like I was supposed to know already. Why was there a power outburst? Did it just happen today? Am I supposed to know what's going on in the writer's head? I would say, but I digress, but I really can't, because this type of shit just keeps happening all over the game. Like, the people wrote the first drive and animated the cutscenes, even though the script was still being written and revised. Literally just making shit up. It's so frustrating, because it's not something that I could chalk up to it just being a fan game. This is just fundamentally bad storytelling. Tails and Sonic then fly off in the tornado from Sonic X, I think, and head to the Grand Canyon. After some poppin', Sonic decides that it would be easier for him to get to the base on foot, so he and Tails split up. Why Tails doesn't just follow him? I have no idea. It's not like he's done that before. Wait, since when did Gun have a lab here? You had an agreement, Sonic. Remember? Yeah, on guarding the temple, not all of this. What temple? Wait, am I supposed to know what temple they are guarding? The only temples in the Sonic series that are worth guarding is the Guy Temples, but that can't be the case because the Guy Temples are trapped underneath the Earth via the end of Sonic Unleashed. Unless Chip sent them away? Which, let's say he did, wh why would one be in the Grand Canyon? Wouldn't it be in Empire City? Or, or if you wanted a desert level, Missouri? It's not like Gun couldn't have a base there. Gun stands for Guardian Unit of Nations, which means they're a global military, not just the US. So again, I have to ask, what the fuck is anybody talking about? You, you see, this wouldn't piss me off so much if they didn't try to place this game in the game universe. 
because that means I'm going to ask questions based on what I know from the games. It doesn't help that the writer refuses to let me in their head cannon. So none of this shit makes sense. So getting off the story before it gives me an aneurysm, let's talk about this okay level and probably one of the most competent in the game, but it still suffers from some amateur boost design. Again, this level does not have multiple interchanging pathways. It just has a split in the road that sends you back to the main path after a detour. And it does this twice. Now, one may be faster, but that's not really a skill thing. It's just making the right choice. Besides that, the level has shitty grinding sections that don't have any challenge. So I don't know why they are here, but the platforming is all right and the music is good, too bad it's stolen from Cars 2 DS. But yeah, the level is fine. It's just fine. It's, it's about as good as your average Sonic Forces stage, I guess. Yeah, I was supposed to avoid that BS. These plain sections suck. Like, they are so bad that I'd rather play all the Sky Chase levels in the franchise back to back than ever consider playing these playing levels again. I'm gonna be completely transparent. I'm making this game look good. No joke, the only reason I'm flying around so smoothly is because I was stuck in these levels for so long on my first go around that I had to get used to the shitty flying controls. Trust me, I know how flying controls should work in a video game. I played Ace Combat. I know how good flying can feel, but this is some garbage. You go forward and back with the left stick and left and right with the right stick. Why in the hell are they not both on the left stick? And where's the break? You're gonna put me in these linear, tight corridors with no break? Don't even get me started on the fact that there is not a reverse button. My first time going through this level was hell, but not just because of the controls, the level design is just so bad. It's easy to get lost or not know what to do, and sometimes you can be going the right way, but you feel like you're going the wrong way because everything looks the same. You also take too much damage just by tapping objects, and- Can you see where you're going? Tails? Who are you talking to? Cause it, you can't be talking to me. Especially with these garbage controls. You know what? I'm just glad it's over. So I can just experience the amazing storytelling. So Sonic and Tails see she Eggman and then Eggman grabs the Chaos Emeralds and, and they just start glowing and and then, and then a snake comes out and eats the Chaos Emerald, I guess, and he's Eggman, and now we have to run away in another goddamn plane section? Why would you put two of these back to back? Were you proud of this bolt? Were you really happy with what you made? Well, you shouldn't, because this is even worse than the last segment, because now there's more shit in the way. The biggest problems with this segment are, one, if you die in this level, you get sent back to the beginning, no matter how far you are. Number two, this part where you are supposed to go up and just have to hover above and let the scene play out. Number three, whatever the fuck the collision detection in this area is, I had four bars of health. How the fuck did I die here? And just when you are sick of the stupid plane, you have to do a boss in it. Okay, this boss is really dumb. The basic idea makes enough sense. Shoot it while its mouth is open, but what the fuck, dog? I can't hit this thing in its mouth without getting hit myself. You see, you have to dodge roll on the bumpers, but too bad it sucks. It doesn't send you far enough, and the only dodge window I could figure out didn't allow for any time to hit the freaking boss. But what adds to the stupidity is that you can lose health from touching the wall behind you, which is actually pretty easy to do. And sometimes your hits just don't connect. It's just an all around jinky boss fight. And this b game is quickly losing any goodwill it did have. <sighs> Sonic and Tails grab the Chaos Emerald and chase after Eggman while the mysterious figure drops Thorndike's name. Yes, that Thorndike from Sonic X. And I guess I'm supposed to be intrigued, but I just feel sardonic. 
Sonic and Tails start chasing after Eggman through White Jungle, which means we are on the gun island that exploded in Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, we were just gonna start ignoring all that established lore. So yeah, uh, let's just get to the, where this game starts falling off. The problem with this level is that it's too much like SA2. And when it isn't being SA2, it's very, very lame or cheap. There are multiple rail grinding segments where you, the player, have nothing to get in your way. You also are better off just jumping around areas instead of actually playing them. And it doesn't help that the boost controls were not made for SA2 level design, so the level ends up being cramped and awkward. Also, this bullshit where I'm stuck to an enemy is a problem throughout the game. And this bullshit where you get hit in this automated section is impossible to avoid. Now, to just move on to the stupid tree level, I don't really know who playtested this and thought it was fun. It took me 15 minutes my first time to get through. And don't you tell me that I can't say the game is bad because I'm just not good at it. Because I got good at it. I can beat the level in two and a half minutes, so don't say I'm trash. The problem is, is that the level isn't intuitive. Your first time through is hell because you don't know that there really is only one way to go. Especially because this blue spring objectively does not work. Yeah, I let that sink in. They also let you fall all the way to the bottom if you mess up one jump. So they have a respawn button, which is stupid. Just make level design that doesn't require a respawn button. This is really where it comes to a head for me, that the people who made this game have completely different things we love about Sonic. Cause I would never think that looking for buttons and climbing a tower in a Sonic game is fun. Like these people like Sonic for what I would say, say all the wrong reasons. Cause the longer this game goes on, the more it wastes my time and this level really fucking blows. We get a short cutscene of Sonic grabbing a Chaos Emerald from the temple, which again, makes no sense because we are on a gun island. So why do they have an ancient temple here? But whatever. So when he grabs it, water starts rushing in for no reason, and man, look at that beautiful lip sync. <laughs> no time to stand still, time to run! So this level has a cool concept. It's ripped straight from Ori, but it's a cool concept. Funnily enough, in the original demo, they actually used Ori music. That's how much of an Ori ripoff this is. Run away from the rushing water. I don't know how they fucked this up. Because I was going to say this level was pretty okay. But then I played it a bunch and found out it has a plethora of issues. Number one, why doesn't the camera turn on a rail? It makes it impossible to see these spikes. Number two, why do the rocks do damage? How is any player supposed to know that a stationary rock does damage? Number three, why is the more difficult left pathway only slightly faster than the right pathway? You are already giving the bare minimum when it comes to multiple pathways. At least make one way faster. Like this level is almost okay, but it just has some fundamental design issues that just make it lame. So Sonic catches up with Tails and wait, rewind that. Did Sonic stop animating before the cut was over? Come on, dude. How did you not notice this? Anyway, Sonic catches up with Tails and they look super proud of themselves. Then the Chaos Emerald just explodes, and then Shadow sees the light coming out of nowhere. I'm not joking. I laughed when this happened. Like, I get I was supposed to clap, but it was so unearned that I busted a gut. We then flash back to earlier, to one of the most useless levels in the game. For the next section of this video, we're going to be talking about shadow levels, and I have a lot to say about them, so these levels are about to get analyzed a little bit harder. Basically, Shadow is going through a simulation at gun on his way to a meeting, which is stupid. So the levels start with a Luminous Forest-esque beginning. Yes, just boosted a straight line. 
Man, such innovative level design. So after 10 seconds of holding forward, you get sent into the first combat arena and hear Shadow's terrible voice and character writing. Look, I'm not a big Shadow guy, and, and I don't mind how he is represented in official Sonic media, but holy shit, this dialogue is parody level, bro. Like, I can't. Just listen. <laughs> I'll get the best result if you stop annoying me. Like, why in God's name would he need to say that? It's not even funny. It just makes me roll my eyes. I feel more offended by this here than in official Sonic media because this game is trying to be epic and serious. So having Shadow be a fucking nerd takes me out of it more than this game already has. So after a defeat all the enemies room, we jump into an elevator shaft and had to press a button using Chaos Spear and just homing attack enemies over a pit. And this level is so boring. Honestly, it's not very interesting. Like, it's not hard most of the time. It's just kind of annoying. Like, this homing attack challenge. Unless you are a baby or the game screws up, you're fine. The problem with this entire level is that there's no flow, no sauce, no style. All of this is pretty slow or leaning way too much on platforming or combat, neither of which is this game's strong suit. Speaking of platforming, this section is a piece of cake because of chaos control, and I guess I should get those out of the way. Shadow has four moves. Chaos Spear, Chaos Dash, Chaos Control, and Chaos Blast. All these four moves are self-explanatory, but they all have their weird quirks. Well, except Chaos Control. Chaos Spear controls backwards. You have to aim with square and shoot with L2. Which makes no goddamn sense. It should be the other way around. Have these guys ever played a shooter before? And you can't even say that they have to lock the aim button to square because that's all square does. Aim. It's just an awkward control decision for no reason. Chaos dash control is weird. Even after reading the instructions, I still don't go up consistently. I have to aim it manually for it to work. Chaos control slows down time and actually works as promised. And chaos blast technically works, but you could only use it in the air, which led to a lot of deaths on my first playthrough. Because if the game told me that, I wasn't aware. And even if it did, that's still stupid when every other iteration of Chaos Blast works differently. What makes this all worse is that there's no visible weapon wheel. You switch between these chaos powers on the D-pad. You have to just memorize where each power is. There's no visual indicator to my knowledge, and I can't see it on the HUD, and the only place that tells you where to switch is in the controls, which just honestly is dumb. There are multiple times where I'm just switching between powers because I can't remember where each one is placed. This is a huge developer oversight that only happens because they played the game so much that they have memorized it. So it's not a problem for them. But on the first or even second playthrough, you aren't going to have the buttons memorized because it's not like they have any purposeful placement. This is some Yandere dev shit. So now that my shadow rant is over, let's get back to the level. So after this is a boring grinding section that you could just boost through. And look, I died in a cramped platforming section and I again set all the way back to the chaos control section. This really doesn't even make sense. Something you may not know about me is that I'm a pretty big stickler for checkpoint placement. I believe that a checkpoint should be in front of a challenge or a string of challenges. And once I complete that challenge, I shouldn't have to do that challenge again. Why should I repeat something I already mastered? This becomes an even bigger issue when there is a set piece in the run. The thing is, I don't mind set pieces. They are part of Sonic. But should I have to repeat a set piece if I die? A perfect example is Rooftop Run in Generations. After running up the big tower and grinding down the other side, they put a checkpoint right there at the beginning of the next platforming challenge. It's really good design. Here, I'm redoing a lame set piece more than once and it becomes less impressive each time, especially since it wasn't that cool to begin with. The next section after the lame platforming isn't really that bad, it's a good challenge too. 
you have to jump on these spinning platforms, some of which have lasers. This type of platforming actually works with this engine and it keeps up the pace. I like it. It's followed up with a Chaos Blast Room that always seems to miss one enemy, but luckily it skips the combat arena. Then we move to the second spinning platform section and they ruin it. They added these enemies that shoot you, which is fine, but they punish you for being fast. If you try and homing attack them, you will get shot and die, which is stupid. Like, how do you mess up a homing attack chain in this day and age? The only way I've been able to get through this section normally is to use chaos control, and I don't really feel like that was intentional. The rest of the level is just meh. Some button pushing, some lame grinding, and a slide section. And to be honest, I'm just glad we can move on. Oh wait, no I don't, because there's more story to deal with. So, the Russian gun agents talk to Shadow about how he needs to get the Chaos Emerald before Eggman, but they say it in the worst way possible, like... The balance of chaos is upset. Sonic doesn't cope with the Emerald's protection. Although he dared to say the opposite. Professor Eggman believes that he can test our patience. What does that even mean? I think they needed a proofreader before they release this game, because I don't know what that sentence means. And what do you mean Eggman believes that he can test our patience? Have you just been letting him go all these years? And if so, why? And if not, why are you acting like you have always been in control? Also, who was the subtitle timer for these cutscenes? The dialogue desyncs so quickly for no reason. And then this mysterious figure gives Shadow a Chaos Emerald, but why? Does he need a Chaos Emerald for his Chaos Powers? If so, what the fuck was I doing for a full fucking level beforehand? This never comes up in the story, so it really just makes no sense for this to happen unless it's for the gameplay, but the Chaos Powers should have been locked off after this level if you were just gonna do it for the gameplay. But no, that would require effort and thought, which no one had when thinking of the writing of these cutscenes. Despite what I said, this next cutscene, while really cheesy, does have great storyboarding. I really do like the idea. Then they introduce Rouge, and she isn't wearing lipstick. And I'm back to screaming into the void. I know it's a little thing, but how do you even mess that up? How? They start expositing an attempt to save the story, but the exposition makes no sense. They say the explosion at the end of chapter three was due to the Chaos Emeralds being out of contact for way too long, which doesn't make any sense for two reasons. This game takes place not too long after Sonic Unleash, so how would it have been too long since they were last in contact? And even if they were, when has that ever been a thing with the Chaos Emeralds? It's implied that the Chaos Emeralds haven't been gotten together in years before Sonic 1, so when did the Chaos Emeralds need to be near each other, especially since they scatter Dragon Ball Z style at the end of each adventure? Now, if the story was about how they've been using the Chaos Emeralds too much, a la Dragon Ball GT, this story would make more sense. But, as it stands, it just sounds like the writers are making shit up. Like they wrote the cutscenes for the game before they had the plot figured out. Moldy Jungle is really lame in terms of level design. The level idea is cool, running through a rotting jungle. Too bad, it makes no sense. They try to blame Eggman for it, but what is Eggman doing to cause this? I thought he was just looking for the Chaos Emeralds. There wasn't a base here or anything, and this is just the next morning from the end of chapter three, so what, when would the jungle have time to rot? It, it, it seems like someone created the level without thinking about how it would fit in the narrative, and normally this wouldn't bother me, but this game seems to be married to its story, so I can't separate the two. They are intertwined. Even getting past the setup, this level is just kind of forgettable. There is the gimmick of poisonous gas, which is fine, I guess, and some rail grinding, even though it doesn't really add anything. But the biggest problems are the lane platforming and button pressings. There's a large amount of button pressing you have to do to progress. It really slows the game down and gets rid of any flow you could have had. It doesn't help that the light speed dash didn't work here, and the end of level has a combat arena where enemies just appear out of thin air, and it's somehow your fault you didn't know they would respawn. Uh, also, I couldn't find a place to put this, but there's a funny part where the subtitles and the dialogue say completely different things. It's, it's a minor nitpick, but it's just kind of funny to me. Hmm. This can't 
arms look like they can be raised. But this level is just so lame. If there are some parts that on your first time, you will genuinely not know where to go. And that is a real problem in a Sonic game. The direction should always be clear in a Sonic game, not confusing. So Shadow has made it to the place you were supposed to go. It's not clear if he was heading for the same temple Sonic went to, and if he did, it, he took a completely different route, but whatever. The gas starts to get to him and he falls. He mentions visions that he's been having and then gets right back up like the gas isn't affecting him. But why? The gas is still in the chamber, so why is he all of a sudden fine? Wouldn't have this been the perfect time to have Shadow pass out to the gas and Eggman gets a leg up on him because of it? Just anything besides fake tension for half a second? Also, when the area he is in starts collapsing, why does he look so bored? Is Shadow just too cool to be surprised? Fuck off. Anyway, he falls and drops the Chaos Emerald and a monster eats it. And I just have to ask, is that why the Chaos Emerald is here? No, seriously, was that the point of the Chaos Emerald? Because I can use all my Chaos Powers without it! This is so confusing to me. Why is it here if it doesn't make any damn sense gameplay or story-wise? And it's not like... The boss is so cool that it makes up for this contrived lead up. Also, what is Shadow talking about? Another monster hungry for the Chaos Emerald. Who is he talking about? Because he wasn't there for Chaos, so he couldn't be talking about him. Is he talking about the boss that Sonic and Tails fought? I, I don't know how he would know about that. This is just a weird line that is referencing something, and even if I understood the reference, it still wouldn't make sense. So this boss has a million health, and you just have to hit it over and over again. I, I don't know what they were thinking. This boss takes so long to beat for what it is. And the best way to handle it is to abuse chaos control so you can hit him better. But be careful when you do, because there's a glitch with chaos control. If you get hit while you activate it, Shadow can't move. No joke. This has killed me too many times. How did this get past playtesting? How did that get past playtesting? Oh, also, you were in a gas chamber while this is happening, so be sure to refill air and guess how many times you could hit him. Twice. You could only homing attack him twice before he shoots you away. But why? It doesn't help that it takes 18 homing attacks to get him to half health. Yes, I said half health because we have a chase sequence to run through. And this is when you realize that these wobbling vines you homing attack on barely work, because you will find yourself homing attacking the same one over and over and over again because the game forgot to move the reticle. It really sucks, because you're on a time limit, and it isn't your fault that the game doesn't work. So after that chase scene, you finally get to the rest of the boss, which is honestly more of the same, just without the gas, and you can hit him more than twice. But don't try to attack him as soon as he appears or the game will decide that you do not have the right and just not have the reticle show up. Oh, no, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no that, one, no, that one's on me. It's, it's my fault. I tried to attack the boss. Silly me and my stupid gamer brain. The only redeeming quality of this fight is that the music sounds pretty good. It has a nice melody. But finally, after what feels like a long wait at the dentist, you can move on with more of the shit-ass story. Fuck! Fuck! Can I just get a break? Am I asking too much here? I don't think I am. I really don't. So Shadow defeats the boss in a cutscene. And it looks fine, but the game thinks it's cooler than it is and tries to make it. <laughs> also, there's an Echidna statue here. I have no idea why, but there just is one, I guess. Okay, I know this is a small detail, but Shadow's fur is weirdly blurry, and I, 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 know, I know it's not me. I have this game at near max settings, and, and it just looks bad. Sh I, I don't get it. I, it's weird. Shadow then sees Eggman and gives chase. Now we enter chapter five, which probably has the worst cutscene in the entirety of the Sonic franchise. We have to go through this play by play, cause this shit pisses me off. The cutscene starts with Eggman stealing the emeralds from Sonic and Tails, just like in Sonic Adventure. He even uses the same device. Right after, Sonic wakes up and notices, Tails is still knocked out. Shadow appears right as Eggman is getting away, and instead of chasing after him, 
he stops to talk shit. Tails! Come on, wake up, buddy. This is no time to nap. Still putting your friends in danger. Because you can do it alone. Shadow, shut up. You, you, you have gone on missions with your friends constantly. In fact, you were in Team Dark. And what do you mean putting his friends in danger? Tails always wants to come along on these missions. He's been doing this shit longer than you. Also, Shadow would never say this. He learned about being a hard ass in Adventure 2. So much so, even Amnesiac Shadow and Heroes created a bond with Omega and Rouge. Basically, all this is to say, this is a gross mischaracterization of Shadow, and I'm not even a Shadow fan and this pisses me off. What are you doing here? Working. This time, the doctor has bitten off more than he can chew. He's even managed to get on GN's bad side. I'm sorry, managed to get on Gun's bad side? Wasn't he always on their bad side? Whether this is the game timeline or the Sonic X timeline, Gun and Eggman have always been enemies. What is Eggman doing that is so different from normal anyway? He just seems to be collecting the chaos emeralds. He isn't even being aggressive for once. It's not like he blew up a city or something. If Eggman was out of pocket in this game, then show us what pocket he is out of. So that's what's been going on. But Gun's bots are too rusted to tell us and Eggman apart. What do you mean, Sonic? You know why Gun is on your ass. Remember Route 99? They literally told you if you went any further, you would be trespassing. Even they think you are being the best. However, the situation has changed, Sonic. The disappearance of the Chaos Emerald. The disappearance? When did they disappear? When the Earth was shattered into pieces? And they were out of power? That's the only time I could think of. But he is saying it in present tense. Like they have currently disappeared. But we know they haven't. They have all been in temples for whatever reason. So what the hell is Shadow referring to? has awakened something, and it longs for destruction. I can't get distracted from my mission. Can't get distracted? You literally stopped to talk to Sonic when you had no reason to do so besides gloat, and have continued talking to him long after Eggman escaped. Also, how do you know it's awakened something? The monster you fought, I guess? Not so fast. Leave Eggman to me. I still owe him a butt kicking for what happened on the island. What island? No, seriously, which island are you referring to, Sonic? Island. <laughs> Remind me, wasn't it Juan and your friend that stopped Eggman when you could not? What offense are you talking about, Shadow? When did this happen? Because I know you aren't talking about SA2. Is there something in Sonic X I'm missing? Because I'm a big fan of that show, and I have no idea what they are talking about. And now they're fighting for no reason even though they are over their beef from SA2 at this point. <laughs> what is he, Dark Super Shadow? <laughs> Alright, disregarding that, when did Shadow push Sonic off of an island? I swear this is referring to a cutscene that never happened or some Chris Chan ass fanfiction in the creator's head, but thinks is real and that everyone should know it. I'm leaning toward the latter. Well, maybe you should stop getting in my way. The way I see it, you're the one in my way. Thanks to you, Eggman is getting away. What are you two even fighting about? You're both chasing down Eggman. This literally does nothing but slows both of you down. Tails is supposed to be smart. How you would use him in this scene is to get Shadow and Sonic to calm down so they could both work on a plan together. But then we wouldn't get Tails being a badass. You can have him be cool, but still in character. And this is out of character, even for Tails in this game. <laughs> Such foolishness. 
catch up. What do you mean such foolishness? You, you didn't even hit him, so what's the point? Also, were you trying to hit him? Or was that a warning shot? I really can't tell. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up the worst written cutscene of all time. So the next level is United Railroad, which is the last shadow level and the second to last boost level in the game. My experience with this level my first time playing was initially positive. I thought the level was actually pretty okay, but then it overstayed its welcome and I hated it. The level starts off with a kind of too long view of the level. A choice between three vines that all do exactly the same thing, and then the level finally starts. One compliment I could give this level is that it has this cool trick where the music syncs up with the dialogue stopping, which is always nice. When you hit the ground, you don't have to do anything complex. Actually, it's generally better to do nothing at all. If you try to jump, you're more likely to die. And we transition to this really weird design choice. So, in a normal Sonic game, springs would be laid out in such a way where they bounce you across them quickly for a quick hit of dopamine. But this game, which is dedicated to not having flow, decides you have to slowly homing attack each spring. This isn't even hard or an innovative challenge, it's just slow and boring. And right after that, you're locked in a room where you have to press buttons. Oh yes, my favorite thing to do, push buttons. And a lot of the stages like this, you're having just a little bit of fun, a little bit of enjoyment, and it just finds a reason to take it away. Let's have a section where you can either run fast or use chaos control to get over the pit. Good, that's some good stuff right there. Stupid homing attack chain with spikes that sometimes don't work, and the only way to guarantee your safety is to use chaos dash because the section is so awkward, bad and lame. And yes, I know you could get through this section without a chaos dash, but holy shit, you have way more faith in the game than I do. So after some lame homing attack springs, you get to start having fun again, dodging enemies and firewalls. And hey, there's a top path. How was I supposed to react to that? Seriously, I had less than half of a second to see the firewall, register it, and move. The only way to dodge that is to know that it's there, and why would you design something like this? There is a way to do trial and error and still be fair, guys. Sonic Unleashed is a good idea of what I mean. While not perfect, you could avoid most stuff it throws at you on your first run if you have the reflexes, but you will miss out on shortcuts, which is very fair. This bullshit is unfair. Luckily, the rest of the section is fair and you can get back up to the top path when you are good, which is pretty good design. This is a genuine compliment, no sarcasm. Then we get put in a weird 2.5D section, the only section like this in a game. But why? <laughs> like, it's not clever, and it's really short, it's just a weird ass design. We move forward to repeat the Chaos Control platform from earlier, except this time you have to do it, and you get launched into the air, and I swear to God, this part is supposed to scare you on your first time. The game wants you to Chaos Dash this jump, so it auto switches for you, but you probably won't notice that your first time and freak out and die. Like, they took a step forward by at least changing it for you, but they also seem to have created this challenge just to jump scare you, which is really odd. It doesn't help that if you die, you have less boost in this section and that there is no slowdown, so you will probably die a second or third time from confusion alone. Great design. We hit a conveyor belt gimmick. It's serviceable, more dodging, then we run into a combat room. Oh, goody! This section is really dumb and bad. Sonic Omens fans can say that it's just difficult all they want, but no, man, it, this is just bad. Look, you got to defeat waves of egg ponds over falling platforms of a bottomless pit. So, because of that, you really can't get hit because it takes way too long to get up, and you might just fall to the bottomless pit in one fell swoop. And the only strategy is to Chaos Blast. Build up meter by homing attacking and Chaos Blast. And remember, you have to jump to use Chaos Blast, so have fun with that. And if there were other combat options, this would be okay, but you just have to mash X. That's it, no fun allowed. This section is so flawed from conception. Combat rooms don't work in linear Sonic games, especially if there isn't a robust combat system like the Werehog and Unleash or even Frontiers. Eventually, a door opens, and there is immediately another bullshit challenge. So remember when I said the Chaos Dash doesn't work vertically? That's when I noticed it didn't. You're supposed to hold L1 to dash vertically. It doesn't work. 
I can sit here holding L1 all day, and it doesn't work. So, postscript me here, I went back into the game and tried to figure out how it worked. Honestly, it's um, really dumb, but it does work. You're supposed to hold L1 or R1, and then press the Chaos Dash button, and then you go up. But still, to be fair, the game never said that. It just said to hold the button to go vertical. But, yeah, the mechanic does work, but how it was explained is confusing. So, don't tell me in the comments that I'm an idiot. I figured it out. But, that also makes complaining about this section of the level a little out of pocket. But, I will say, the section is still flawed. If you mess up one time, you have to do the whole section all over again. And that is so tedious. Like, give me one chance to mess up. It's not like you have been testing me on this the whole game and this is my final challenge. No, this is the second time I've been required to use it. And depending on how you play, it could be the first time you use it. It's really backwards design. Maybe if you wanted me to use the vertical chaos dash, you should have built more level design around it. Anyway, let's just fast forward to the section after this. So I'm going to be honest, I feel the level should have ended by this point, but we just land on the train and the level just keeps trucking along. This last section is one part clever, one part lame, and one part frustrating. The part that is lame is these doors. You have to homing attack. There's no challenge, no timing, just uh, mash the attack button. The clapper part is running on top of the train section. This is a genuinely cool idea. And the frustrating part is running under these crates. I, I just don't understand it. Even when boosting, you can still get hit, and chaos control is not always available or helpful. Also, be sure not to jump. I tried that on this run, and it uh, did not help. It it's just an annoying part of the level, especially since they add Eggman monitors that you can't see because the level helps camouflage them. And after cycling between these three sections, we finally end this godforsaken level, and why are his eyes so reflective? That's weird. A anyway, something hits Sonic and Shadow and the level ends. I think I feel really strongly about this level because it had some great ideas, it but it feels like it's actively trying to self-sabotage itself, and that pisses me off more than a genuinely bad level. <laughs> well, besides that, there isn't much plot importance to this cutscene. The voice from earlier tells Shadow to hold back, and we actually get a pretty good lead up to a Sonic vs. Eggman fight. Alright, the energy is here, the music is blaring, what type of boss fight are we getting? It's a running boss. Why does it have to be a running boss? While I don't hate running bosses, they are so hard to do right. But what makes this worse than most Sonic running bosses is that you could only hit him for a short period of time. And only if you have enough boost to keep up. My first time playing this boss was absolute hell. I almost put the controller down. And don't you dare say hashtag skill issue. I see you unironically typing that in the comments. This boss is flawed because the people who made it didn't think it through. This boss works on Simon Says logic. It doesn't attack, and you have to avoid that string of attacks before you get the right to hit the boss. This seems like your average boss fight, but no, it's so much worse. The tracks and mechanics aren't designed for it. Well, let me explain. You're supposed to save your boost for the big moment at the end so you could defeat the boss. But if you don't boost, the level decides to punish you for hanging back and playing slowly. So you have to hit this perfect medium of not using your boost and using your boost. But sometimes the game will screw you over. It'll put explosives where you need to go or give two contradicting orders and sometimes just shoot you in the face for trying. And the controls don't help. Sonic turns really slow in this game, but sometimes you have to make a quick adjustment and the quick step just isn't enough. 
and I know to you guys this looks at least normal. It's only when you play it that you really get why it's so poorly designed. Especially since this could have been solved if the rings regenerated and the cards gave you boost. Like, I don't know, the silver fight in Generations? The blueprint was right there and you still fucked it up! How embarrassing. Let's move on from peak ass to peak stupidity. So Gun shows up to the scene to arrest Eggman. Then they tell Sonic he can't have the Chaos Emerald because of a treaty he signed saying he was the protector. Which to be honest is so out of character for Sonic, guarding is more Knuckles thing, so he should have been responsible, but whatever. But honestly, I wouldn't mind this little plot point if it didn't contradict earlier in the game. If Sonic is supposed to be protecting the Chaos Emeralds, why in Area 99 do they have a base surrounding a temple that holds a Chaos Emerald? I don't care if you make up your own lore. Well, I care a little bit, especially with the Sonic and Shadow thing from earlier. But when you do, make it make sense within the narrative you are telling. Don't have characters argue about things that never happen on screen. And don't have things stated that completely contradict each other. So... The obvious bad guy, the Exiled, shows up and destroys Gun's troops. And also the city for no reason. And I'm gonna tear down all pretexts. He, he's, he's a Metarex. You know, those guys who were only in season three of Sonic X. It, yeah, he's like the last one or something. One thing that makes no goddamn sense is that the Exiled makes a big production here when he obviously works with Gun. He would already have the emeralds in his possession. Why would he steal it in front of Sonic and before Eggman is in custody? It just doesn't make any logical sense except to have Sonic meet the villain of the game before it ends. That's the only reason I can think because the Exiled has Shadow on his side. He even knocks Sonic out. He really didn't need to let Sonic know that some fuck shit was happening. Sonic was under the impression that he just legally lost the Chaos Emeralds, which wraps around to another problem with this. Why did he, the writers decide to introduce a plot line that has no payoff? Like, this never comes up after this. It barely applies to anything before, and it doesn't change the scene at all. It would make more sense if the Exile just stole the Chaos Emeralds from Eggman after Sonic 1 without the help of Gun. And then Eggman calls a small army, so he fights back. You get an action scene, show off the villain, and have a good reason for Sonic to chase him down for the final act. But hey, what do I know? This is obviously the best Sonic story since Black Knight. I, I think this next section is a section that probably broke me on my first playthrough. Sonic wakes up in this place and you are put into a forced walking segment. Look. I could handle a forced walking section of something like God of War, or Uncharted, or Last of Us. Those games are movie games, and I enjoy the stories or dialogue, so it doesn't really bother me. But in games like Metal Gear Rising, an action game where the story is dog shit, it is very frustrating when they make me walk and talk. So. You can imagine my mouth agape when I realized I couldn't run or boost. This was an insult. If I remember correctly, I even tweeted about it. Shameless plug, by the way. Because seriously, how dare you? How dare you make me walk in a Sonic game? Luckily, there are ways around this. You can spin dash. Yeah, I know that, that, that that's in the game. I, I I don't know why, but 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 it's here. Yeah, yeah weird. Uh, bounce. You could bounce. You can and jump. Luckily, those speed this section up. But considering I lose all my speed if I stop doing these things, I feel it's not intentional. So I refuse to give them any credit. So after all this walking. What is this building up to? What could they possibly think requires this amount of dramatic weight? We made it. The Chaos Emeralds have securely connected our worlds. Once separated, united again. 
Now, there is no need to fight for the resources of the planets. The energy of chaos will be enough for everyone. We're ready to strive for a better future. Together. Isn't that true? My friend? Fucking Chris Thorndike ushers us into the last part of the game. And to be honest, he's the only voice that sounds good. And his model isn't the worst I've seen. But what he is saying makes me ask a lot of questions. Because the way he is talking, he's acting like the worlds are combining right now. But they haven't. Is this a flashback? Well, we don't know. It's never clarified. Also, how would chaos energy help with resources? Like, maybe electricity, but that's about it. I, I don't really get the plan here. Like, I get the idea, but I don't understand the plan. And then Sonic wakes up and we're launched into a near six-minute cutscene where most of it is an exposition dump and the other portion is a montage. So, apparently Chris had 15 years to live after traveling between Worlds and Sonic X. So I'm guessing at some point the worlds merged, or they didn't? Because I guess Sonic X Season 3 only happened over a short period of time, so they could be talking about that. Because we have to be in the human world because Gun is here. But wouldn't the whole Sonic cast be on a time limit since they dimension hopped pretty casually too? This is oh, really confusing. But wait. How did he age 15 years so quickly? I mean, I guess time moves faster in the human world according to Sonic X logic, but did they forget that he went back to Earth? He would have gone back to being adult, so why does he look 20? So Chris climbs up the ranks of Gun and reforms them. How? I don't know. The game doesn't tell me, it just says that he did. Then he meets the Metarex. How or why? I don't know, because the game doesn't know. And don't tell me that this isn't important. They got me sitting through an exhausting exposition dump. They can't write this shittily, but then have me still confused about what the fuck is going on. And, and then Eggman says when Chris died, Gun just went back to normal and the exile didn't want anything to do with Gun. But really, how the hell does Eggman know this? Like, I get it, it's implied he's been keeping tabs on Gun, but still, you limit his knowledge in how Chris and the Exiled met, but he knows all the Exiled's motivations? That's just pure inconsistency. Eggman proceeds to explain that the Exile wants the Chaos Emeralds to time travel, but to do that, he has to destroy them. Okay, whatever. That's a thing now. Even though that you could just use the Time Stones on Little Planet, probably accomplish the same thing. You just had to have the Chaos Emeralds be in danger, I guess. And apparently the burst would kill everything, even though the Master Emerald has been broken on many occasions and has never been an issue, but go off! And apparently there's there are these omens that only appear when the Chaos Emeralds are in immediate danger, but they haven't been. We fought two of them in this game and both times the Emeralds weren't in any danger, they were just around. And the Chaos Emeralds have been in danger multiple times throughout the series. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Sonic Unleashed. How come the omens didn't appear then? I understand that this is a fan fiction, but if you're going to use established continuity in your fan fiction, you have to explain why a thing didn't happen last time if it contradicts previous lore. If you don't want to be held by the bounds of previous lore, then you have to create your own lore. Which, to be honest, I think the writers did, but they just didn't show anybody their lore, so I don't know what has happened or what hasn't happened. Also, let's say the Omens do wake up when the Chaos Emeralds are in danger. How would they know? Do they just feel the vibes are off? Why have one of them attack Sonic and Tails? They're protecting the Emeralds. Can they just not tell the difference? If that's the case, how do they know the Emeralds are in danger? What is the criteria? You see how this questioning leads you in a circle? Never ever write a story like this where all the explanation happens at the very end. It never goes well and it usually causes more issues unless you plan this out from the get-go, which this story feels like it was written out of order. Sonic and Eggman join forces to take down the Exiled. And we get a montage where we just see the state of the world. 
and the Master Emerald cracking. Hopefully that comes back to mean something. And then we get put back when one of these plane levels! Why? But why? Can you give me a break? Can you just stop hitting me with trash for just a second? Just a moment! The last cutscene was so bad I couldn't enjoy the Sonic X labo motifs floating around in the score! You know how hard that is to do to me! And now, I got this bullcrap? Screw you! And they still give you more exposition! Let's keep talking about it! So, they try to explain some of the Chris stuff. So Chris tried to combine worlds, but he died before he could. Okay, that clears some things up. But, they say that the events of Sonic Unleashed was Eggman taking advantage of Chris's dream. But how? I... I don't get it. He tried to awaken Dark Gaia. What does that have to do with combining worlds? I don't know what the game... I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. The game doesn't tell me. They say that the temple shouldn't be in this world. So I guess this is the human world. But in Sonic Unleashed, was that Sonic's world or the human world? And if it was the human world, when did Sonic and friends come back to the human world? And the problem with building your two worlds off of Sonic X is that the show ended with both characters in their respective worlds. So you need to come up with a reason why they are where they are. But the game never goes through the effort, so everything seems so half-baked. Then Sonic and Eggman have a back and forth, and it's really odd. Sonic says this. We're not friends. I still haven't forgiven you for all the things you've done. Not for Earth, not for Chip, and certainly not for Angel Island. But why these things? Like, Earth, that makes sense, but Chip was supposed to stay in the center of the Earth even if Eggman didn't do anything. And Angel Island is such old news, I'm... Surprised Sonic is holding a grudge, especially since Eggman didn't do anything crazy in that game. Now, if Knuckles was here, that would make sense. But I guess he's busy with the Master Emerald cracking, because that's a thing, I guess. Now we can talk about this crappy flying level. All my control complaints from the first one still stands. Rewind this long-ass video if you forgot. But what makes this super annoying is all the stop and go, and all the insta-kills and the insane health loss. If you're boosting and even slightly touch something with your wing, say goodbye to half your health. I'm sorry that this seems a little unfair considering this is only the second time I would be doing this. This level also has a weird soft lock buck in this room. Sometimes the doors don't activate after pushing the button. It happened on one of my test playthroughs, but I haven't been able to replicate it. But be on the lookout for that in this room. Another technical issue is the pop-in. It's really noticeable in this level. It's honestly a little embarrassing. I think the worst part about this level, though, is the section where you have to kill all the enemies. Because the enemies keep respawning, so you can get easily confused. I think you have to defeat all the enemies in quick succession. And even though it is that simple, the controls make this a tedious task. The level ends with you dodging the third omen, and it's a simple red light, green light game. When you finish that, the level is over. So while this is happening, Shadow starts moping about Sonic ruining their plans. He sees an illusion of Maria and ends up having a boss fight with her. And this boss is better than a lot of the bosses, but that's only because you have to go through the cycle three times. It's a bullet hell boss, just keep dodging till you win. Remember that Chaos Control is your best friend and you can brute force your way through this boss. And what I have to say about there being a fight against a dead child, I'm not offended like a lot of people, but this is just so overbearingly edgy and not in the good way. I like me some edge. I was born in 2001. Edge was the culture when I was a kid. I have a nostalgic fondness for it, but this truly isn't it. Especially since the boss has no bearing on the plot or story progression. It feels like an addition just to shock players and get people talking, which is so cheap. After Shadow defeats the illusion, we find out why Shadow helped the exile. It was to see Maria, I think, or bring Maria back. 
I'm only saying this because the exile reveals that he was the one giving Shadow visions of Maria for two years, and Shadow wanted those to stop, and I have to infer that what he thought would be the solution would be to see Maria again, but he can't see dead people with time travel because they have left the time stream. Uh, okay, whatever. At least this cutscene gives us some Oscar delivery from Shadow. Liar! Wanna try that again? Liar! Okay, geez, we'll leave it in as it is. Oh, and Shadow and the Exile fight off screen or whatever. The second half of the cutscene is actually pretty cool. Sonic has to get inside the Citadel, so Tails shoots him on a rocket inside. It would be impressive if they made that uncool, so I'm uh, I'm glad the scene delivers. And now we are on the last level of the game. This level is the most creative level in the game. This level really does stuff you could only do in the Infinity Engine. I can commend these guys for making such an interesting level that makes floatiness a part of the challenge, not just a thing. But this level is hindered with terrible level design choices checkpoints, and combat rooms. And the first look into what I mean is that they have a section that repeats where you are running toward the screen, you have no indication as to where to quick step to get boost or to hit an enemy. Your controls are also reversed, too, so, you know, there's that. Uh, it's always an adjustment period when this happens, which all of this could have been solved by placing the camera behind Sonic. But one thing that is cool is that this skydiving section is constantly iterated on over the course of the level getting harder and harder each time. So these are actually kind of fun. Too bad you can make them trivial by just pressing stomp, but this was still a good idea and good design. I never felt like any of these were unfair. Another positive is the music. It's very much EDM, but it rocks. It actually m makes this level a little bit more bearable. This level is also the first level since the second one that actually integrates the grappling hook into the level design instead of leaving it to just shortcuts. I would say the opening of this level is pretty good. It starts getting iffy when you get to the first vertical running section. You see, I didn't get hit in this footage, but the yellow electricity insta-kills you, which is really stupid because nothing else does that. And even the yellow electricity in the level design doesn't do this. So this is just to add a fake difficulty. It doesn't help that this turn has a small chance of just not working. And then they follow up the wall running section with a combat room with enemies that take your boost away if they hit you. And it's not like there's some strategy to beating these enemies. You just mash the homing attack button and hope you don't die. Isn't that fun? And then right after, there's a cutscene that can kill you. No joke, randomly you could take damage in this cutscene and die. Absolute insanity. The level decides to integrate on the swinging gimmick, following it up with an underwater section which is really cool. Because Sonic is super floaty, he's basically flying in the water and it's such a cool idea and has mostly cool execution except for this air bubble, which I have no idea how to get and not get hit. But this section is honest to God cool. But if you die here, you get sent all the way back to the quick step section, which is just so tedious. It almost ruins the section, to be honest. The next big gimmick is these giant swinging homing attack sections over a bottomless pit. They are okay. They're good when they work, but when they don't, it could feel really unfair. You kind of just have to hope that the platforms are in the right order and have enough quick wit to fix the problem. You also need to pray to God that the homing attack works or you will just die. The second combat section is worse than the first because it's the same thing but with more enemies. What am I supposed to do here? All I can do is mash homing attack. I tried the light speed attack. It doesn't really help. This is just bad enemy design for a Sonic game. But then they follow it up with this badass shot where you are homing attacking these bubbles and see this giant vertical shaft you have to run up. This is actually hype. Is Sonic Omens a good game? Liar! Yeah, nah, this game is still trash, but I can compliment it when it's doing something right and get mad at it for having a section where you have to mash homing attack at a wall. 
This feels really like one last fuck you. But hey, Sonic looks beat up in the results screen, so that's neat. So Sonic all beat up meets up with the Exiled, and the Exiled is destroying the Chaos Emeralds. Sonic saves one of them, and the camera just keeps breaking. Like, wh wh what is this? It keeps happening all over the cutscene. So, in a totally well-timed exposition scene, we learn that the Exile wants to go back in time so he can see his planet again, which is this game's attempt at creating a relatable motivation, but it doesn't work as well as it thinks it does, considering this guy destroyed a city for no reason. Shadow creates a distraction, Sonic absorbs the energy of the chaos almost thanks to Chip, I guess, and <laughs> he's, out of... <laughs> he's out of frame. <laughs> and the final boss begins. So this works differently than most supersonic boss fights. You have to fill your boost gauge to transform and getting hit makes you lose all your boost. And when you transform, you get 50 rings. Interesting way of changing up the formula, but sadly, the most efficient way to beat this boss is run in a circle, mash on the attack, and rinse and repeat. Phase 1 is kind of a joke. Then there's this really cool cutscene transition into the second phase. Where... Why does he look like that? No, no, that's not what Metarex look like. No, no. Metarex are... Oh, my. Did, did, did they forget what Metarex actually look like just to make it, this guy look edgy? So now he just looks like a giant orangutan, not like an actual metarect. Oh my, so stupid. Anyway, the second phase of the boss fight is you just have to wait till your meter fills up and then stun the boss and mash homing attack. This is so lame. Why would you make this a final boss? Nothing about this is cool except the cutscenes. Honestly, this is really such an underwhelming way to end the game, man. The game's final cutscene tries to make everything emotional, but at this point, does anyone care what's happening? They ha they drop a cheap Black Knight reference and have Sonic break Chip's bracelet to fix the world because the chaos energy and, and, and the game just finally ends. Wait, Knuckles, wh what are you doing? Wh why are you leaving the Master Emerald? Just, just, just put it back together. That's, that's literally a power you have, Knuckles. Knuckles! The game's last shot is Chris's grave, and do I even have to explain why that's funny? <laughs> but again, they had a one last fuck you. So Chris went to Sonic's world in season three when he was 18, and when he came back, he had 15 years left to live. Let's just ignore how time moves faster on Earth and Sonic X, and let's assume the writers just forgot or that didn't happen in this version of events. So, he has 15 years left to live from the age of 18. So, he would die at 33. So, why the hell did he die at 29? That's four years early, you bastards. Was re referencing Sonic 1 that important? Was referencing the original project name so important. If that's the case, why didn't you just say he had 11 years to live or something? Why didn't you think this thing through? And that's pretty much a good summation on my thoughts, really. Why does it feel like this game was not thought through? Pretty bad story, bad voice acting, bad level design, but all of this is covered up by prose processing and high poly models and every kid thinks it's the second coming of Christ without even playing the game. So people love or hate this game without even playing it. Well I did. And while there are some cool ideas and some things worth praising like storyboarding, the game is finished and the, well the graphical fidelity, but it's not enough to save this game from the fundamentals. I feel like people that made this game do not like Sonic for the same reasons I do. In fact, I don't think they like Sonic at all. At least it doesn't feel like it. If this was an attack on the Sonic community, well done my friends. In fact, considering some of the things they have said, like this game was made out of spite, I could almost believe it. Ah, and that's it! I'm done! I'm finally done! As you could probably tell by my difference in mic quality, I'm obviously in a different space. I'm back at college. Which means streams are going to start up again soon. I know most people would say that streams are ending because they're in college, but the internet sucks in my house, so hey. 
Um, in fact, I'm actually going to be streaming right now. I'm actually going to be streaming Sonic Omens right at this moment. Like, you should be able to look on my channel or see it somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I'll put a card? I don't know how that works. I, have, I, I haven't set up streams in advance before. But, hey. I'm going to be streaming Sonic Omens one last time. It'll be a post-mortem. You could join the Discord if you want to be in VC while I'm playing the game. Or you could, uh just stick in chat and comment at me tell me why i'm wrong tell me why i'm right just one last look at the game before throwing it away and deleting it off my laptop entirely and i can never touch this game again because it truly truly was a piece of trash <laughs> i did not have a lot of fun with this game but i did have fun making this video um as you can see by its length but uh thank you for waiting it's been a long time coming. I haven't uploaded anything big since the Sonic 2 video, but as you can see, hey, got a quality product out of it. Um, I, it's not perfect, but hey, that's what refining and refining's for. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching, especially if you watch this whole one hour video, even if you're watching it as a podcast. Thank you so much for just listening in or watching the whole thing like a movie if you're at the premiere of this video hi how's it going i should be in chat saying thank you and blowing kisses and all that bullshit and uh if you like this video please be sure to like and subscribe and hey even if you didn't like it dislike it or hey share it with a friend spread it around post it where you think is necessary it really helps out a lot more than you can ever imagine. Just you interacting with the comment content, even leaving a comment, be it a hate comment or a positive one. I don't think you understand the massive amount of impact that has on me as a creator um, for criticism or just growing as a content creator, which is, is, is a goal of mine. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, see you at the live stream. I have to put some text in the video for some little mess ups and uh to put all the music titles in but uh we did it hopefully my next video doesn't take three months see you next time